Part of the Caravel harness is these two one kilobyte SRAM blocks that are included, and those are accessible from the Pico RV32. These types of memory blocks are often provided by the foundry, but they're not available under a open source license, so normally you're not allowed to share them. But these SRAM blocks were generated with open RAM, which is a set of tools that can generate memories, and we're using those in the eFabless shuttle. So how do we know whether these memories work and what kind of frequencies they can run up to and how much power do they take? Well, eFabless made a special test chip that includes just the memory and breaks out the relevant pins. So we've got these SRAM blocks inside a chip and we can test them, but who's going to do that work? Well, luckily for us, Andrew Zonenberg has volunteered his time to do some characterization work on these chips. So welcome, Andrew. Um, I was wondering if you could tell us um, what are we trying to achieve with this test? Uh, all right. So I do have the samples. They came in at this uh, week or so ago. Uh, so kind of the first step is obviously verifying that the RAM is functional and behaves as memory. Can we write stuff to it? Can we read stuff back? Does it hold data if, you know, we wait a minute after writing this their data read back? Um, after doing that, it's going to be a little bit more characterization, playing with timing, adjusting, phase of clock relative data, try and get some setup and hold numbers out of it, make sure those track of simulations properly. Uh, we are obviously going to be limited in how fast we can test just because of the I.O cells on there so well i'll do it what i can given that um another key step is going to be checking data retention under various conditions so having io separate from core power turning the io power up and down see or sorry turning the core power up and down um and seeing how low can we go without losing data um I may also be able to negotiate access to a thermal chamber. And so if we can test these chips, for example, at, you know, negative 10C or plus 85C and verify that they still do what they should, check at extremes of voltage, you know, maybe they're nominal, I think 1.8 volts. So if we try running them at 1.7, 1.6, 1.5, see when they start losing bets. And so really uh, just that kind of validation is going to be the main thing. And uh, I'll do what I can as far as timing verification goes. But again, I expect the IO cells to be the big limiting factor. So there's, there's only so much testing I can do as far as timing goes. And, and we then, think uh, that the bandwidth of the IO cells is around about 50 megahertz, right? Uh, it, it's low. I forget exactly. But mm. yeah, they're, they're going to be the limiting factor. I don't think the RAM is going to be the limiting factor. So really the main thing we're testing is data retention, power consumption is going to be another thing. So looking at um, on the new board compared to the one they apparently already had that shorted the two power rails together, the new one is going to have the core power and the IO power separate. So we can keep the IO power constant and then play with adjusting the core power up and down and measure current, measure data retention, et cetera. Could you just say a bit more about that um, short circuit issue? Um, so I never saw the previous board, but my understanding is that the die has separate power rails for the IO cells and the memory core and the previous board connected those together. Um, this is separate from one of the other chips, uh, Strive, I think it is called, uh, does actually have a short between, and very similar, the core and the IO power are shorted together, but that is actually an on-chip thing. So that would require a FIP edit to fix. This does not. Okay, so okay, so um, actually, we can do all the tests we need to do without doing a fib edit on this chip. Okay, and just I did send me some bare dies which haven't come in yet. Those were going to ship separately, just so I could do some practice runs. Because basically, as far as I'm concerned, the bare open RAM dies are relatively expendable, and so we can do testing on those and then wire bond them, and you know, make sure everything's working correctly. And if one of those dies doesn't make it, so what? You know, they weren't going to be used anyway, and, and so. They good for testing and you know wire bonding is a bit of a finicky process and so i'd need to be able to tune the process parameters and get everything working and, you know if one of the data lines doesn't connect properly or one of the uh, address pins is floating or something like that then you know for practice it's not that big a deal and it, it'll it'll give me something that was made on the same process as generally the same metal stack and so on and so i can get all the variables tuned on those before i try and do the actual edits okay and same as FIB process development and so on, you know, figuring out etch rates and, uh, you know, do we want to use gas assisted etching or not? How deep the cut needs to be. And um, for people that don't know what a FIB edit is, can you explain that? 
Uh, focused ion beam, uh, the best way I can think of to explain it is nanoscale sandblasting. So you're hitting the device with a beam of usually, in our case, uh, gallium ions and blasting away parts of the surface. And then you can also, uh, we don't need to do it for this case, but you can also deposit materials using similar techniques. Uh, in and this case, it's going to be one cut, so it should be fairly straightforward. And then tell me you've got one of those in your lab. Uh, I do not. We do have one at work, and uh, I hinted to my boss at the idea, and he seemed receptive. So uh, I haven't got official sign-off yet, but so far it sounds like they're interested. So Fingers crossed on that one then. Okay. Um, so uh, I'm at work too, so uh, I'll be able to do chip on board or something like that once we've finished the edit. We also have some uh, empty, like, uh, SOIC and QFN packages that I could bond it into. So depending on how many IOs are actually needed for the thing to work, I'll I look at either a chip on board or just doing a package that we then solder. Again, it'll, it'll be situational. So I haven't looked at the bond diagram of Strive at all, but for open RAM, the package ships are fine. Okay. And then when we're talking about chip on board, so we're going to need a board for that, obviously. So is that... Is that... I know nothing about Strive other than that the first version had some minor issues and the second version didn't seem to boot at all. But we're, we we're focusing this on the memory chip though, right? Uh, so yes, a board is going to be required. It's actually going to be two boards. Um, the first is going to be a reusable carrier that I may try and use for some of the other characterization work as well. I'm going to try and make it pretty generic. Um, it's going to be an STM32 uh, and a small Alex FPGA and some voltage regulators and stuff. Uh, and then also, most importantly, and one of the reasons why an off-the-shelf dev board wasn't a good choice for this, is it's also going to have some variable power rails so we can adjust power being fed to the chip under test. And then just some kind of, uh, I'm looking at probably a Semtech Q-strip, like a QTH030, QTH060, something along those lines. I haven't figured out the pin count yet. Um, Connector. Oops, that sorry, would, to withdraw, what's that? I didn't, uh, uh, something by Semtech? Connector similar to... Uh, oh, so to plug these two boards in. And so the first board, it'll be, you know, I'll only need to make one of them. If somebody else is going to do some of this work, I can make one for them. But for my purposes, I would only ever need to make one of them. That'll have the FPGA and my control that'll run the UART interface for dumping test results and so on. Uh, I haven't decided the exact partitioning of work between the two yet, so I want it to kind of be flexible. But the intent is that the microcontroller will do kind of the control flow, figuring out high-level test strategies, and then the FPGA is going to be doing all the timing critical stuff. Okay. Um, and then uh, uh, the microcontroller will also have an I2C or SPI interface to talk to some kind of a DAC that'll set the I.O and core power rails for the device center test. The idea is to be able to fully script all these tests so I don't have to be sitting there poking at stuff. I want to be able to just plug a chip into it, go run through the test suites, look at the results, and so on. Um, anyway, so this would then meet with a second board that would contain the open RAM test chip and probably a few decoupling capacitors and not really anything else. So that okay. would be a breakout. And, and I just want to say um, thanks to OSH Park for sponsoring those boards. Cheers. And then, uh, yeah, I, I have a friend that I was actually, uh, I was going to be seeing her later today and uh, asking about uh, the thermal chamber that uh, apparently uh, she had been planning on arranging for some other testing. And so if I can manage to get in on that, that'll be perfect. So, Cool. So what's the next steps then? Make the PCB... Yep. Uh, actually, this morning I was working on the board. The uh, FPGA and my controller board is probably about two-thirds done schematic-wise. I was just uh, talking in the Slack with uh, some of the folks, figuring out exactly how many IOs I need to talk to the RAM chip and what the power requirements are and so on, so I can get all the little details narrowed out. But yeah, probably another few hours of work on that, and I'll have schematic done. Then uh, layout should be, I mean, an afternoon, if that. Uh, I'm using the, well, I was going to use the smallest uh, Spartan 7s Xilinx makes. I'm probably going to put the second smallest in there. Just I'm not quite sure exactly, uh, you know, what the requirements of the tests are going to be. And they're pin compatible. So I'll design it and take either. Cool. And in case with component shortages, it's safer to design for multiple possible parts too. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's learning this new skill. Now, so fingers crossed I'll still be there when I click buy. <laughs> okay. It's actually... Only Xilinx part in stock at DigiKey that's less than like 800 bucks, but 
yeah, I, I did want to go with something pretty fast. You know, a lot of the ICE 40s and stuff are nice for lower speed stuff. But in this case, uh, one of the key features from this Alex stuff that was important to me was uh, the PLL has runtime reconfigurability. And so I'll be able to play with clock rates and phase shifting of stuff at runtime and not have to be constantly loading new bit streams. And so it, it should speed the test programs. Because again, I want this to be scriptable enough so that I can do testing of multiple different dies automatically. Okay. Um, so do you have the samples right there? Can we see them? Um, I do have them. They're in a bin in the other room oh, and well. uh, my phone doesn't have a good macro lens. Okay. So Fair enough. <laughs> it just looked blurry in the background. No, they're, 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 pre they're pretty boring. It's a 64 pin QFN that just says OR1 in handwritten marker on the top. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they don't have fancy laser etch markings on them. Oh, maybe that makes them cooler though. <laughs> Um, okay, so next time we meet up, hopefully we'll see the PCB and maybe you'll have started with the gateware. Yep. Uh, I mean, honestly, I'm going to try and write most of the gateware while I wait for the boards to be fabbed. And mm -hmm. so I expect probably two thirds of it to be done by the time boards come in. And then it's just getting a matter of all the glue and actually getting things working. So, Okay, awesome. Well, thanks very much for your time to talk about this, Andrew, and thanks also for volunteering to help with the characterization of the RAM. It's really awesome. So, Say that again, sorry. Sounded like a fun project. Yeah, yeah. It's great to have you on board. Okay. Cheers. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. And make sure you join us next time when we'll be talking more about the PCB, the FPGA work, and maybe starting to get a look at the characterization results.